Hello, this is Dr. Jake Abbott, and in this video I'm going to talk about stabilization. Uh, this video presumes that you've already watched and understood the video about um, controllability, and specifically we talked about breaking up a system into its controllable and uncontrollable parts. So let's say we have some system. This is a, this is a review now. X dot equals AX plus BU. And we saw that we can do an equivalence transform that will, will, that will transform this into some new state. Let's call it X tilde. So we'll have some new matrix A tilde, X tilde, uh, plus a new B tilde U. So we've done some equivalence transformation. So A and A tilde are equivalent to each other. And under this new form, I'm going to write out my tilde, my tilde form now. And it looks something like I have two, two parts of my X tilde. I have the controllable part, I should use a little script C, and the not controllable part. So this should be a review. Uh, these two are both dots. And I'm going to have a new, my new A tilde matrix and my X tilde. There's the controllable part. And there are the not controllable part. And we found that this looks something like this. This A matrix always has a zero here, and it always has a zero here. We are left with some sort of B here. Let's call it B tilde. And we say that's B of the controllable part. Then we have some sub little sub matrix within A tilde. So this whole matrix is the A tilde matrix. But I have a little A tilde that's the controllable part. And I have an A tilde that's the not controllable part. And then I have some more numbers up here. They, in general, they are just some numbers. I'll just call it space one, two. Um, they could be zeros even potentially, but they don't have to be zeros. So this was our um, this was our decomposition into the controllable and uncontrollable parts. And we found that within this system, so if we were if we were to do the controllability of our original system, if we were to look, say, ask the pair, is the pair A B controllable? we would find the answer is no, it's not controllable in this case. And the reason why is because we have this little system that sort of lives within our system. And I can just write that system by itself. The not controllable states are equal to some A not controllable times not controllable states. So I have this little system that lives within my bigger system and my input completely doesn't affect it. This thing, maybe it's stable, and maybe it's not stable. It all depends on the eigenvalues of this little, this little not controllable A matrix. There's nothing I can do to affect those eigenvalues. They are what they are. But if they're stable, then potentially I can deal with this. So even though my original system was found to be not controllable, when I look at it like this, I say, yeah, it's not controllable, but the part of the system that's not controllable is already stable. And if that's the case, if we find that this that this is stable, then we can move on and we can say, okay, I might maybe that doesn't have the time response that I that I would love, but at least it won't go unstable on me. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to design the um, the transient response of the other eigenvalues because when you look at the eigenvalues of my A tilde matrix, this is a upper triangular a block triangular matrix. So the eigenvalues of this matrix are the eigenvalues of this matrix and the eigenvalues of that matrix. So I can at least affect these other eigenvalues through state feedback, and so that's what I'm going to do. Um, this presumes this pair um, this pair A C tilde and B C, this is a controllable pair, but of course it is a controllable pair because I've already decomposed my original system into this, this form that has the controllable part and the uncontrollable part. So if you go and do an analysis and say, is this pair A controllable, B controllable, is this controllable? You'll always get, the answer will always be yes. This is always controllable because the, that's what this form is all about. So I can't affect certain eigenvalues, but at least I found that they're stable, and I'm going to move on and find these other eigenvalues. Now, let me make it clear. If you find that, that the eigenvalues of this not controllable matrix are unstable, then you should not even bother proceeding. 
this system is unstable. There's nothing you can do to stabilize it. And, um, and you really need to go back and add more actuators to your system at that point. You need to fundamentally affect your B matrix. But um, if we find that this system is already stable, then we can, um, we can affect these eigenvalues. And we call such a system a stabilizable system. So if I ask the question, is this system controllable, you say no. And then if I say, is it stabilizable, you say yes, if this matrix is, is already stable. And what that means is, you know, even if the eigenvalues of this upper um, controllable part of A, even if those eigenvalues were unstable, we could make them stable through closed loop feedback. And so that's why we call it stabilizable. And so let's go ahead and do that. So if we take this system and we're going to implement the, the, the feedback law from the last video, which is I'm going to, for my input U, I'm going to have some reference R and then I'm going to subtract k times x. But it turns out I can do the, the equivalence transformation that I just talked about in the last slide, and I'll have some new k tilde with my new x tilde vector. And I can break, I can break um, that up into, oh, excuse me, so I can say this is equal to r minus, and so there's really going to be two parts here within my within my larger k tilde. And I should, I basically, if you think about what my states are gonna look like, here's my x tilde. I'm gonna have this x of my controllable part and I'm gonna have x of my not controllable part. And so I could just go ahead and call this, this set of k's, the k's for my controllable part and the k's for my not controllable part. So if I actually go through and do the full math of this, what I'm going to find is my new my new A matrix, which now is going to look like A minus B times K, and this is from the last the the last um, stabilization video. So, or excuse me, the um, state feedback video. So I've gone I've gone ahead I've plugged in my U and I've gotten this new system, which is that that X dot is equal to A minus B K times X tilde plus um, b times r. So I come in here, I have, I have my a minus bk, and when I solve for that, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a times a of the controllable part minus b of the controllable part times k of the controllable part. And then I'm going to still have a zero here, and then I'm going to have my A of my not controllable part, which is completely unaffected by my state feedback, which is exactly what I expect. And in this, in this upper right entry, I will have affected it as well. And so I'll have, I need to put a little tilde here, I'll have my B of my controllable part, which sits here. And then I have my, sort of my, what I'll call my uncontrollable K values here. So this is my new A matrix. So just like I expected, I couldn't affect these, but if they're already stable, that's fine. And I can affect these, and the results for this upper left entry look just like the result from the state feedback um, lecture. So basically, we can place these eigenvalues wherever we want by choosing these Ks appropriately. And so we can affect our system's time response. Now, these Ks here, I mean, when you look at this upper left matrix, you realize it's fundamentally based on these Ks. And so the question is, you know, do these Ks matter? Do they, do they have any effect? And the answer is, they do have an effect. I mean, they do come into our A matrix right here, but they don't affect our eigenvalues. That doesn't mean that they don't affect your time response because your time response is a more is a more um, complicated thing than just your eigenvalues. So these these leftmost entries of your of your gain matrix are used to set your system eigenvalues, and these other these other um, gains are used to sort of essentially change affect the Jordan form of your matrix. I mean, if you think about it, we can have many different matrices with the same eigenvalues but have different Jordan forms. So 
So that's what you should be imagining here. I mean, imagine a case where you have two different A matrices that have the same eigenvalues but different Jordan forms, and you can imagine that those can have different time responses. And that's what we've done here. So, so I hope the, you know, the takeaway from this video is pretty clear. If your system is not controllable, that doesn't mean all hope is lost. It may still be possible for that system to be stabilizable. How you analyze that is you break your system up into its controllable and not controllable parts, and then you look at the not controllable parts and ask yourself, is, it, is the not controllable part at least already stable? If the answer is yes, then your system is stabilizable, and you can proceed with designing the, the system eigenvalues that you do have control over.